winning sometimes seems so easy. For those born with the right genes, gifted the right facilities, blessed with good health and fitness, victory can seem almost assured. But for many athletes, there are hidden obstacles, some of their own making. Others can feel the pressure of the intense spotlight. The trick is fighting back and dancing to the podium with style. The comeback is always sweet and even sweeter when it's against the odds. He's football's ultimate rock star, and not even retirement has changed that. For David Beckham, the son of a kitchen fitter and a hairdresser from North London, life would change permanently and dramatically on the back of his prowess as a player. He would become a title winner in four countries, England, the United States, Spain, and France. He was a great player in his own right, a genius over the dead ball, captain of his native England, immortalized throughout the world. But equally as importantly, he was a worldwide ambassador of the game. From the time he arrived at Manchester United, through his years at Real Madrid, and then with LA Galaxy, steering American football to prosperity, and finally, at Paris Saint-Germain. Something about Beckham tickled the public fancy like no other footballer. The fact he married a pop star, the Spice Girls' Victoria Beckham, only added to the mystique. The Beckhams quickly became one of the world's biggest celebrity couples with their clean-cut image appearing at A-list events all over the globe. But for David Beckham, his hero status comes not only from what he could do in the number seven shirt, from the swerving free kicks and the ability to stay at the top until he was almost 40. It comes from his work for UNICEF and his ambassadorial roles in places like China, where he worked to popularize the game. asking me to be the Goodwill Ambassador for UNICEF, which was one of the proudest things that I have received, one of the proudest moments. It's great to be part of an organization that does so much for so many children around the world and has done now for 70 years. David Beckham became the Pied Piper of football. After the break, the philanthropic side of a footballing genius. Fame was a given for David Beckham from the time he stepped out in Manchester United's first team, winning a Premier League title and an FA Cup in 1995-96 and scoring a famous goal from halfway against Wimbledon. It was the arrival of a superstar of British sports, as observed on the spot by a television commentator. David Beckham, surely an England player of the future, scores a goal that will be talked about for years. But as he carefully constructed a playing career as a midfielder that would include six EPL titles, Beckham realized that he could use this for better purposes. He played for arguably the biggest club in the world and certainly the most dominant. 
United won six titles in eight years under Sir Alex Ferguson's iron-fisted management during Beckham's time at the club. Ferguson would go on to win 13 league titles and a whopping 38 trophies with United. As for Beckham, why not use his profile for something deeper than football? Sporting organisations and charities soon realised the truth, that not only was Beckham deadly serious about his ambassadorial works, but he had this tangible impact on the people who came to see him. What was it like meeting David Beckham? Beck's, isn't it? Mad, he's just right over there. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's been it's been mental. Like he's he is David Beckham. That's that's all I can say. That like, anywhere you go in the world, no matter where you are, you go to flipping the deepest part of anywhere, and they know who David Beckham is. And yeah, man, he's just he's a G. He's such a humble, cool guy. Like. Yeah, man, it's mad, it's mad. I'm still feeling a bit surreal now. Beckham's primary charity is UNICEF, the children's protection organisation first formed by the United Nations in 1946, now operating in 190 countries. Beckham first joined the organisation in 2005. A decade on, he was still working for UNICEF and starting up his own fund. Appropriately, it is known as the Seven Fund, referencing the shirt number for which he is famous. As a UNICEF ambassador and as a father, it breaks my heart to see children continue to suffer. That's why this year I launched my own initiative with UNICEF, the Seven Fund, making a serious commitment to help the most vulnerable children in the world. In 2012, he sat down with the British Prime Minister, David Cameron, pleading for help to curb children's malnutrition. In 2014, he visited the Philippines to witness the aftermath of a typhoon that devastated the area and impacted on thousands of children. By the end of his glittering playing career, philanthropy became his passion. When he played his final season at Paris Saint-Germain in 2013, he donated his entire salary to charity. It's not until you become something like a, an ambassador for, for UNICEF that you realise how powerful the sport is and how powerful your voice can become. It gives you a voice and it makes people listen and it makes people actually realise that they need to help children around the world. On a sporting level, he's used those Pied Piper abilities as well. After leaving Real Madrid in 2007, he was lured to America by the Los Angeles Galaxy as the face of the sport in the USA. The Galaxy knew their man. There was only one person who could create the kind of interest that they wanted to manufacture in America, obsessed by NFL, NBA and Major League Baseball. I've come to make a difference, said Beckham at the time. And he did. The Galaxy won two cup titles in Major League Soccer and the sport itself has grown exponentially in the States. Let me tell you, before we came out tonight, David agreed to a new six-year contract with the Galaxy. But all, all kidding aside, he's been a, a, a great player for our organization, for the Galaxy, for Major League Soccer, and for many great clubs around the world, for England, and he's a great representative of the game around the world. David, thank you. It's been a good few days. Um, I want to thank you guys for the support that you've given me over the last six years. Maybe five, five and a half years. There was a, there was a little bit of a dodgy patch, but apart from that, but um, I want to thank you. It's been amazing. It's always nice to be liked and loved by the, 
the fans that support the team. So, um, thank you. Then there's the China story, where a retired Beckham was hired as an ambassador for the Super League in 2013. The league was struggling after some controversies over match fixing and needed to get back on track. Again, they knew their man. The development of Chinese football cannot be achieved without the long-time effort by the social organizations such as Song Qingling Foundation. And it is also benefited from the great support from compassionate public figures like Mr. David Beckham. We can say that since Mr. Beckham took the position of ambassador for China's Super League and the development of Chinese youth football, he has tightly bound to Chinese football. At one point, there was a stampede, literally, upon a visit to a university in Shanghai by Beckham. A number of people were hospitalized in the crush. Here was further evidence of the Beckham effect. Actually, we were expecting that Beckham could have some interaction with us on the pitch, and the fans better behaved. But we didn't expect so many people showing up here. Too many fans of Beckham. Too crazy. David Beckham's career is outstanding, spanning 20 years from his start in the Manchester United youth team to his final season at Paris Saint-Germain in 2012-13, where he won another title in Ligue 1. He became a fixture in the game, a talisman of the sport, winning six English titles, one La Liga championship, two MLS Cups in America, and a French championship, as well as the Champions League final with United in 1999, part of the fabled treble. The only missing link was a World Cup, and while he played in three and twice went to the quarterfinals in 2002 and 2006, it was his 1998 round of 16 send-off for kicking out at Argentine player Diego Simeone that most rankled with him. At the time, I didn't realise how big it was and how much, um, you know, kind of hard work that I would go through over the next few years, and obviously it was very difficult for myself. What's clear is that David Beckham great footballer was so much more than the sum of his achievements as a player. Put simply, he's a hero of the sport. When we return, a true champion of German football. Franz Beckenbauer both captained and managed West Germany to World Cup victories, putting him in elite company. He's a legend of Bayern Munich at club level as well. We're in the lead, but not out of trouble. The man known as Der Kaiser had to dig deep into the depths of his resilience to achieve what he did. The images are iconic themselves. The 1970 FIFA World Cup semi-final between West Germany and Italy at Estadio Azteca in Mexico City. The teams locked together after full time, and Beckenbauer, having treatment for a dislocated right shoulder, suffered in a heavy collision earlier. The Germans had used their two substitutes, but now they needed to play on for 30 minutes. Beckenbauer had the medical staff strap him up, and he played out the game. Although West Germany lost 4-3 in the end, the legend of Franz Beckenbauer was born that day. It showed how much the World Cup meant to the man. On every level, he's a hero of the sport. 
By the time West Germany reached the pinnacle four years later in Berlin, Beckenbauer was captain and general from the central defense, cutting off the opposition and setting up teammates from his position as the so-called libero. Beckenbauer would lift the trophy as the Germans defeated the Netherlands 2-1 in the final. The great Gerd Müller scoring the conclusive goal in the 43rd minute at the Olympic Stadium. It was the Germans' first World Cup triumph in 20 years, and now they were both world and European champions. Not that the Kaiser was about to rest on what he had done. He had reinvented the position of sweeper, making it an attacking position from the central defence, earning the highest praise from no less a judge than Pelé, the great Brazilian. Beckenbauer was one of the best I ever saw play. Under the leadership and guile of Beckenbauer, Bayern won three consecutive European Cups from 1974 to 76, four Bundesliga titles and four German Cup trophies. Later in his career, he followed Pelé into America, playing for the New York Cosmos, ultimately completing his career with two Ballon d'Or awards as the best player in Europe and a spot in FIFA's World Cup all-time team. As a manager, he quickly took the Germans to a World Cup final in 1986, suffering a painful defeat by the astonishing Diego Maradona and his Argentine team in Mexico City. But in 1990, he had his greatest triumph, with Andreas Bremer's penalty goal giving Germany the FIFA World Cup trophy, 1-0 over Argentina. As a captain and manager of World Cup winning teams, Beckenbauer joined Mario Zagallo of Brazil as the only men to have done that particular double, a feat later matched by Didier Deschamps of France. Beckenbauer regarded this as the pinnacle of his career. It doesn't come any better than managing a side to victory. Beckenbauer managed Bayern to a Bundesliga title and became president of the club, taking them on the road as one of the world's most famous franchises. It is hard to enjoy the city because you sit for the longest time in traffic. I was here for the first time in 1977 with the New York Cosmos. The traffic changed in this time. Back then, the streets were full with bikers, and now all the bikes have become cars. You can imagine that everything is packed. It is hard to get to the next place, but it is fascinating to see all the people. One of his most significant acts in football came off the pitch, leading a unified Germany's successful bid to host the FIFA World Cup in 2006. The Germans won by a vote from South Africa. Sadly, controversy over the awarding of the 2018 and 2022 World Cups would cloud the latter part of his life in football. After a FIFA investigation into the bidding process in 2014, Beckenbauer was ordered to stand aside from football duties for three months because he failed to cooperate with the authorities. Later, the ban was lifted after he agreed to cooperate and he was given a warning by FIFA's ethics committee. None of which changed the fact that Beckenbauer is one of the greatest players of all time, a remarkable manager and administrator in his own right, and an iconic figure of football. 
He is the one and only Kaiser. Up next, the man for whom winning seems like second nature, Pep Guardiola. Josep Pep Guardiola has the touch of the fabled King Midas when it comes to football. He is one of those rare people whose skills as an outstanding player for Barcelona FC quickly translated to management, where he became arguably the greatest in the world. Perhaps even the best of all time. Guardiola has already won titles as a manager in Spain. Three of them with Barcelona in La Liga. In Germany, three in a row with Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga. And more recently, the English Premier League crowns with Manchester City in 2018 and 2019. Nothing is missing. There are two UEFA Champions League titles with Barca, as well as three Club World Cups and two FA Cups. In all, he had collected 27 trophies as a manager by the time Manchester City closed out back-to-back -back EPL victories in 2019. The record speaks for itself. He is a hero of football. He invented a style of football known as tiki-taka, based on quick and accurate passing, with possession as king. However, in recent years, he has decried the style that he created, telling a writer in his time at Bayern, I loathe all that passing for the sake of it, all that ticky-tacker. The truth is that his greatest skill as a manager is to draw the best out of his players. Ironically, in his initial phase as Manchester City's manager, he struggled to make the adjustment, and his first season was trophyless for the first time in his career. For Alex Ferguson, my idol was 11 years to win the, the first Premier League, so uh, Liverpool is 25 years old and didn't win the, the Premier League, so I need time. I said from the beginning, from the beginning, so from the beginning of, the, of my, you know, of my uh, year, so I need time. But in his second year with City, 2017-18, the Guardiola style kicked in. City won the EPL title. When they defeated Southampton in stoppage time in the last game of the season, they hit the 100 points mark. This put Manchester City, a club so long in the shadows of the mighty Manchester United across town, into the stratosphere as the greatest accumulator of points in a league season. City won a record 32 games and recorded the biggest goal difference ever, plus 79. It's 100 points. <laughs> so still I cannot believe it. So Premier League 100 points, so it's a massive uh, achievement. The, the favourite is the way we played, because uh, always we, we play the numbers, always consequence what we have done in terms of the way we play and the mentality. In every game, in every game, you cannot achieve 100 points and you drop games. So a lot of goals, concede few, a lot of points. So wins at home, wins away. So everything was perfect this season. And finish the way we deserve to finish. When City swept all of the English trophies in 2019, Pep Guardiola was once again in familiar territory. He had won not only the league title, but the FA Cup, the League Cup, and the Community Shield. The first male team in English football history to record a treble when they crushed Watford 6-0 in the FA Cup final. 
Guardiola's current City contract extends to the end of 2021, and he's still chasing a Champions League title with that club. But whatever his future holds, he's made his mark. An indelible mark. I just started to playing football uh, young, young. When I was a young guy, all my career was on the pitch, and I would do, I want to do something else in my life. But uh, now in the next three, four, five, or six, or seven years.